management. We're producing this, this painting video to really uh, uh, to help to help all our maintenance technicians in, in providing a quality paint job in the apartment complexes that we manage. The main reason I'm making this video is, is during the interviewing process, 90% of the people indicate that they can they can paint. Painting's actually a little more complicated than uh, what most people think. And we're producing this videotape so that we can sh show you the most up-to-date method that we've developed, actually that I've developed in the whole process. We have our cameraman's phone going off right now. And basically what we've done is we've put together a painting system that will help facilitate you in your painting from the day to day. I've been in the property management business since uh, 1985. I've started at, on the on-site level being a resident manager. I got involved in painting and I've painted many hundreds of apartments and throughout the course of time I've developed faster times. I've worked with uh, local painters in the area here and, and learned additional skills to help facilitate painting. You can take, uh, you can paint an apartment in a matter of four hours or you can paint an apartment in a matter of 15 hours. Depends on the skills that you have, the abilities you have and the systems you have in order to, to accomplish painting an apartment in a short period of time. A number of things that we're going to go through is I'm going to talk about all the equipment that we have in the, the painting kit that we're issuing. Um, we, the primary reason I issue a painting kit is so that we help promote uh, efficient paint, painting within the apartment. So I'm going to walk you through the different, different items that we have here and, and basically some of the uses. Once we go through that, we're going to talk about the paint itself, as far as the different types of applications, processes, types of paint. Um, there's different uh, grades of paint. And then we're going to go into actual applying the paint on the walls and some of the, some of the different criteria in prepping the unit for painting. So let's begin here. Everybody should have received what we call a painting policy here. This painting policy is really your Bible in the painting business. It really walks you through different, uh, different areas of painting. It highlights all the areas that I, I feel are very important in, the, in, in painting an apartment. Painting, uh, as I mentioned, 90% of people indicate that they can paint, but what I found is about 10% really know how to put the paint on the walls. And uh, uh, this painting policy kind of outlines all that. Um, you should all have read through here and should be very familiar with different categories and some of the things. I've highlighted, I've highlighted the areas, remember the phrase on almost every paragraph in here, and those are key phases to keep remembering while you're doing painting. Our, our job is to provide a quality paint job in the unit and to have it uniform, uniform coverage, not getting paint on the woodwork, cleaning up, basically having a professional professional appearance in the apartment. Our goal as a property management company and as, as far as maintenance goes is to increase the value of an apartment building. And one of the ways we do that is by, you know, besides the, the management side of it, the maintenance side, when we do maintenance in a unit, whether it be painting or other, other areas, we're always making that look better. We're always making the walls look better, we're doing maintenance, the caulking looks better, we're always improving the apartment versus, versus just trying to fix it and make it look good. Every time we get done with the process, the thing we're working on, whether, whether, whatever type of maintenance it is, should always look better than, uh, than when we started. And that's a goal. Remember that. Well, I'm going to walk through some of the painting equipment that we have here. Um, when you first start, either your painting supervisor, your maintenance supervisor, or yourself, you're going to be issued a, a basically a painting kit and once again the main reason I have a painting kit is so that you do have the tools that you need to to do the painting the painting in the apartment in an efficient manner I need you to look through these listen to what I'm saying and, and hopefully you'll be able to pick up on some uh, some important information as we walk through here so here's a painting kit approximate value of putting this painting kit is about $150 you need to look through uh, that all of our painting kits do have our color coordinated so they match up so that they don't get intermingled. Um, the equipment I'm showing you today um, happens not to be color coordinated, but you should have a color that's issued to you. 
Also, that collar can be used for other things too. For instance, so your tools don't get commingled with other workers. You know, just putting a uh, spray collar on your tools helps you keep your tools in, in your own stock areas. So I'll kind of walk through here and uh, show, you, show you some of the stuff and some of the rationale why this stuff is in your painting kit. One of the most important things in painting or one of your tools is your paint, paint brush. Basically, you should have two different types of paint brushes within your, within your painting kit. One is a polyester nylon bristle brush. We typically will issue either a two and a half or a three inch angled brush, which is what I found is the most efficient. Basically, it's for getting into corners and edges. The angle actually helps out on it. So either the two and a half or the three inch brush is what I recommend. The other brush that's in your kit is a china bristle brush. Uh, the china bristle brush basically is, is used for applying oil-based paints such as on entry doors, heat registers if we put an oil-based product on that, or using other type of oil-based type products. Um, it should not be used for latex. The reason it's a china bristle brush is so that the, the bristles on here are a lot thinner, they're narrower, so they don't provide streaks on the, the metal surface doors or flat doors. It provides more of a uniform, flat coverage, whereas the, the polyester, the nylon brush provides more of a, uh, it puts coverage on there, and uh, the latex paint, it, it smooths it in better. And, and it's not as critical having all the bristle stroke marks out of the, the the brush. Now you'll notice that these brushes uh, are in a, a, a cardboard container here. These cardboard containers are, are basically used to store the brushes. Every time you, we pay, actually we buy fairly decent brushes. The brushes that we buy anywhere are from $15 to $20. Basic life on a brush is 20 years, like 20 years. The basic life on a brush is one year. Um, so maintaining your brush is critical in, in and keep, keeping it good, keeping it the bristles flexible so that it, it works well and you don't get don't get the bristles all stiff and hard hard to maneuver. But basically once the brush is done and it's all cleaned up, the brush should be restored back into the cardboard container. That way when we put the brush into our buckets, drop it in our buckets or keep our brush in our, our tool bin, it maintains the brush the bristles so that they're not sticking out all over the place. So Somebody's trying to get me on the cell. So there's, there's your two different types of brushes, and that's why you have two. It's not simply a backup brush, but you know they have different purposes there. As far as the rollers, for getting the roller, that application of paint on the wall, there's different types of rollers. The rollers have different naps on them, it's called the thickness of the thickness of the fiber that's on the actual roller. This particular roller is a half-inch nap. Um, and half inch is, is pretty much what you what uh, most of our most of our uh, walls use, and then when we use ceiling, we get a little heavier nap. This is probably about a seven eighths inch nap on here. We use ceiling, so the basic premise is the narrower, the smaller the nap, such as smooth walls, such as we have actually have in the office here. A smooth wall, you want to use a nap that is really very very thin. It's almost it's almost non-existent, like a quarter inch nap. As the walls get more texture on it, you want to use a little bit heavier nap. And uh, since most of our walls and apartments have a little bit of texture on them, a half inch is a good, good size nap to use. You know, I typically, when my rollers aren't being used, I will store them into a, a plastic container like this. And then even when I'm, I'm painting multiple apartments for storing them overnight, keeping them wrapped up so they're airtight and they don't dry out on you, it's a good practice to keep it in the plastic here. Um, as we're going down the line here, we also have, uh, we, print, we issue out actually a fairly decent roller roller frame. This roller frame um, that we, we, we uh, is, is a little bit more heavy duty, spins a little bit better, has actually a very a little bit better, um, it, 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 it rolls the roller a little bit better than some of the other roller frames. So we, we, we try to buy better equipment for easy application. This roller slides on here and we'll get this to use down the line here, but it slides on here, and um, I guess we'll, we'll get to this later as we uh, start applying the paint to the wall. A couple of other things that we have in the kit here 
is our, our primary method of uh, putting the paint on the walls is by using a five gallon bucket. And uh, we put a frame, this is called a, a painting frame or painting grid. We use this, it hangs inside the five gallon bucket, such as we got an empty bucket right here. This grid hangs right in the, the buckets, such as that. And actually the roller dips down in the paint and goes off into the, the grate there. And we'll get into that. And then once we're not using our grates, what we typically do is we'll drop the grate down in the paint, put the cover on it, seal it so it doesn't dry out. But the, the, one of the most important things is making sure that these grates stay clean. And we'll get into cleaning up our equipment down the line. This example is a grate that has not been cleaned. You know it's white. It's actually pretty, a pretty thick coat of paint on here. And you can't let these grates dry out in this type of fashion because once you start getting them in the paint, you, it seems perfectly okay to use it right now, but once you start utilizing this grate into the paint, the paint, since this is a latex paint, it starts actually eating away at this and you'll start getting strings all over on your roller, which are, are not one of the pleasant things when you're painting. So you should not let a, a grate dry out like this so it has a coat of paint on it because you will be... Uh, it will be biting your lip down the line because it will create a lot of problems. So this is really ready for the garbage. Not much we can do with that. A couple of other things that we got in the paint, painting kit is, uh, is our mixer. We got a bigger mixer here for a five gallon bucket. We got a smaller one for a one gallon bucket. It's very important. One of the key things in painting is making sure that your painting, your paint is properly mixed up and all the pigments are, are loosened up off the bottom and, it, and it's all stirred up. It, uh, you want a consistent type of paint and you don't want different color color combinations. Mixing up the paint is key to making sure you have uniformity in color. This other roller that you issued basically is a foam roller. Um, there's two things that really what goes hand in hand with this foam roller is your china bristle brush. These are to be used in conjunction with each other. The china bristle brush cuts in on the doors and our primary use on these is on steel doors. This cuts in if we have a, a, a six panel door, goes around the edges, goes around the windows. And then we use the foam roller to do the flat surfaces on the door. The reason we use a foam roller, once again, if you notice that the, the other rollers here have kind of a nap on them, the foam roller is very smooth. So you get a very smooth finish on your doors by using these foam rollers. You need to make sure you take care of foam though so it's not stored and you get indentations in here because obviously it, it kind of ruins the application. A good example of a, here's a nine inch foam roller that has been improperly cared for and uh, there's indentations on the foam roller and uh, this, this roller would not work. This roller is a good example of uh, ready for the garbage. It would not apply a nice, nice uniform coat on the door of a garbage pile over there. So that's what the foam roller is for and making sure that those are cared for. We also have a short edger here. Edger can be used for a number of different things. The primary thing I like to use the edger, edger for is after we've painted the trim work, I actually use the edge of the edger to clean up along the woodwork. And we'll demonstrate that once we, uh, once we pull the tape off of the, off the woodwork and we do our cleanup. You got a brass bristle brush here. Uh, this brass bristle brush can, has multi, multi uses. It can be used for, for cleaning up different equipment, getting into small crevices, and we'll, we'll show a couple examples of uh, how to use that brush or, or when to use it. Paint cleanup is, is utmost important, and you'll hear me emphasize that a number of times during, during our paint job. There's two different products we use. One of them is Goof Off. One of them is Goof Off, and, based, and the other one is, is called Crud Cutter. Both of these are, are decent products in removing paint. Um, one, of our, one of our things that our paint policy clearly indicates is that any time that we have paint, any time we have paint on, on woodwork or a paint where it shouldn't be, that we document it on our timesheet and we actually remove the paint off the, off the product. And we'll, we'll look for a couple examples on that. And actually that's a good, good use on the, on, the, on the brass brush here too. But it's critical, you know, and I can't emphasize enough. No paint on the woodwork. If you have paint on the woodwork, we got problems. And uh, 
Our supervisors will be assisting with, with different, uh, uh, different practices and whatnot, but the, the main emphasis is no paint on the woodwork. If there's paint on the woodwork, it has to come off. And uh, we, hear the, we hear the comment all the time, the paint was on the woodwork before we started. And uh, that's why we document taking paint off and we uh, put that in our paperwork so we can justify why it took a little longer. And we actually code it different when we, when we take the paint off the woodwork. So we'll, we'll get into that down the line here. Uh, the crud cutter also works for latex paint does not come out of your uniforms. And as, as you're probably aware, when you receive the uniforms, we sign the policy that uh, uh, our uniform company will charge us when these uniforms are turned in if there's paint in them. So it's, it's utmost important you try to keep your uniforms paid free, and so that when you do turn them in um, um, down the line, that, that they won't be charged for. Uh, and I've, I've heard from some of our, our maintenance supervisor, actually one of our, our main ones here, Chris Crud Cutter. Apparently, if you do get some paint on there before you put it in the washing machine or you try to wash it out, use some crud cutter. It, it breaks down the paint and it could help, help clean, up, clean up the uniform. So be, uh, be cautious of that. Liquid soap detergent. This is uh, one of the best products I found for cleaning up our equipment after the day is done. And we'll go through a demonstration on that. But you should have a small, small bottle of uh, dish soap in your, in your kit. We have a small container of, uh, some people call it spackling. I like to use joint compound for filling in hole, nail holes in the walls and different types of, um, different types of uh, divots in the walls. And prepping the wall is the primary thing for your, for your joint compound here. We have our extension pole. Basically, it's used for getting up to high places, getting down low. It makes your job a lot easier. It has different settings, so what you feel comfortable with. This stick comes in real handy for getting the paint up and down. It, it, it eliminates a lot of work because you're not bending over, you're not reaching up. You know, some people use painting pans, and you put the painting pan on the floor, and you don't use a pole, for instance. You lean and lay down, try to get the paint on the roller, and the stick comes in handy. And uh, just extending this to a comfortable, comfortable but it works for you. And I'll show you the fundamentals on that. There's actually a strategy to using a roller and a paint bucket. In your paint kit, you also should have three different 18 inch by five foot tarps. Actually, these tarps are cut to this length for a particular reason, um, which we'll show. There's actually three of them. They're using a leapfrogging technique so that uh, you can efficiently paint along the edges and move around with your with your, uh, your paint bucket, not get paint on the carpet because we do require that wherever you have your bucket and wherever you're painting, you have all the tarps that are covering, covering that area because we don't want paint drips on the carpet. And with this leapfrogging technique that I'll show you, we'll, we'll, we'll demonstrate on how to use this effectively so you can move around. One of the main reasons we use a smaller tarp, it's only narrow, so you don't walk on the tarp. Once you, once you start walking on tarps, if you're dripping paint on the tarp, which you can see this tarp has paint all over, if you drip the paint on here and you walk on it and you walk in your apartment, you're actually spreading paint around. So the primary, primary thing is for having this underneath the areas you're painting and you're not to walk on it. That's why they're narrow. You also should have one larger tarp here. When you're painting ceilings, you always have to have coverage wherever you're going. Because uh, as you're painting a ceiling, you have uh, the texture that's on the ceiling dropping down on the wall, sticking to the roller, etc. And you're trying to catch all the paint drops. Once again, you always have tarps placed underneath where you're painting. So you have one larger type tarp for painting ceilings. You're also given a bucket. You know, the best way we found to keep this whole painting kit together is putting it in a bucket. I have an apron wrapped around my bucket so I can stick additional tools in the side here, such as putting my brushes in here and putting the different equipment. And the whole thing is trying to have a, a system that, that when you go to paint an apartment, you have your whole system in one bucket. It's very easy. Uh, it's well put together. I've got my paint, uh, paint can opener here. And I have kind of my tools all pulled out right now. But this bucket provides an instant, uh, instant method for going in and getting, getting an apartment painted. It has all my tools together, so whether I'm going to go paint, I grab my paint bucket, if I go to do some plumbing, I got another kit for plumbing. 
Caulk is another important thing. I don't know if we'll get into some of the fundamentals of caulking. Caulking is very complicated. Getting a tube in is one of the complications here. But uh, the caulk, caulking can either make or break an apartment. Whether I demonstrate it or not, the primary thing on caulking is to, is to always look and make sure that the caulking looks good when you're doing it. You can have a, I, uh, uh, we should cut out old caulking that's black and dark so and put in a fresh bead. And the whole thing is not to put too much caulking in. You want a nice finished look. You, caulking, the primary purpose is just to fill a crevice with, that needs a caulk and, uh, and not overdo it. Don't put a big glob of caulk and don't make it massive. Um, it really degrades and the, the property looks, looks worse. A couple other things, a sponge. Sponge can be used for, for different purposes, for cleaning up your material or some minor drywall work. I don't like the sponge. The sponge technique can be used for kind of matching in some of the texture. I don't really care for it though because it's very difficult. Then the other thing that you should have in your kit is a green scratchy pad. Green scratchy pad uh, can assist with getting paint off the woodwork. It can also, using this in conjunction with some of the goof off that's in your kit, or it, could, it also is great for cleaning up your equipment, for getting, for getting the, uh, the paint off the, the metal here when it's dried off, getting along the edges, scraping off the paint off your, your grid that, uh, that needs to be cleaned off. So these green scratchy pads were great for cleaning that off and also getting that. So that's, that's part of the kit, the kit here too. Everybody should have a couple rags. Rags are great for cleaning up. Basically, I use, excuse me, I usually stick my rag in my back pockets I have there. And as far as tape goes, tape is critical in, in painting apartments. We do use tape on all our woodwork. Some people say that they don't, they don't like to use tape, but uh, our policy is that we do use tape. We use a one inch tape. Main reason we use one inch tape is, is, is that's what I found to work best in, in painting applications. Tape is, gets to be expensive too. The main reason we don't go to a, a larger than a one inch tape is primarily the cost. When you start going up from a one inch tape to a two inch or two and a half inch tape, you, you double, triple, and, and uh, quadruple the cost of tape. I found the one inch tape is the most effective uh, uh, cost, cost means to, for taping, taping things down. And we'll, we'll get into the fundamentals of taping, but uh, the one inch tape is, is key in here. And taping is actually an art in itself. And we'll show you we'll show you some of the fundamentals on that. So here's here's your entire painting kit here. We kind of walk through the different uh, some of the different uses here, and um, this painting this painting kit in, conjun in conjunction with the policies and procedures that that you've read in your painting policy are some of your some of your key things. I keep referring to this. Everybody should have signed this painting policy when they when they came on board here, and. Uh, I can't emphasize enough on, on reading through this, understanding it, because our maintenance supervisors will be watching, watching the quality of paint, and hopefully they're setting a good example on how to use this equipment. And when we do find areas where paint is on the woodwork, once again, you know, basically we send people back into the units and um, make sure that we do that. Our, our number one goal is to increase the value of these, these buildings. And by, by doing good paint jobs, paint's very important. Paint, I, I can't emphasize that enough. And, uh, you, know, you know, come on into our team, and uh, we will uh, hopefully show you how to, how to deliver a good paint job. So let me, let me go up. We're going to be going over to a unit, and I'll sh show you how to use this stuff and the, apple, ac the applicable ways of, of of why we have this equipment, and we'll look at different things. So, let me check my clipboard here, and we'll be off. Look at my clipboard here. There's two other areas I want to cover. If you notice, I'm a prepared painter. I got my two pouch, my two pouch uh, equipment thing right in front of me. And you may ask, what do I have in this pouch? These are some of the essential tools that every maintenance tech should be carrying wherever they're going on their day-to-day -day adventure. What I have in here is I have a drywall knife, which is multi-purposes. Multi um, I have a versatile screwdriver. 
comes apart. I have two different size Phillips and I got two different size regular. So that this comes in handy for many, many uses. I have a little screwdriver for doing little, little jobs on it, which might not be in your issue kit, but uh, it, it's something good to have. I have a pliers that I carry around with me. And I also have the versatile flip-up razor blade. This razor blade also has very many uses and it comes in handy during uh, the day-to-day -day activities. So carrying, carrying this, uh, these equipment to things around and then last but not least I have a tape measure. You, there's, there's all kinds of different applications you do on a maintenance on a day-to-day -day basis and uh, measuring things out is, is very important. I keep that on there. So, so being ready to handle any type of maintenance application is one of, one of the variables here. And uh, your supervisors will continually monitor to make sure you have appropriate tools on you. The other thing, we're, we are going to go paint a two-bedroom apartment. Uh, the one other thing that the painting policy has in it is the time allotment schedule. And I'm just going to look this up just for our, our purposes here, because we're going on here. It talks about the different complex that we have and then what's allowed for, for taping and painting, for doing ceilings, and the total for the job. These are, these are time allotments that you need to continually monitor during your day-to-day -day activity to make sure that, that we're falling within the time allotments. You also have to remember when there's two people painting in an apartment, you're doubling your time. So you need to be a little more efficient and you can usually get a little bit better systems going too. So if I look on here, I'm going down to a two bedroom, I'm looking at forest view. We're just gonna do a tape and paint today and it tells me that I have seven hours to get that job done. So if we had two people, we'd have three and a half hours and, and you look at the different projects. It also, it also goes into other, other, uh, other things too, is if we had, uh, if we had other, it talks about single rooms, extra rooms, closets, uh, stairwells. Some of our units have, a, it's a two level thing, they have a stairwell going up. So you can kind of add up the hours. But for our purposes today, we're going to Forest View. We're going to do a two bedroom apartment. We got seven hours to do it. So I'm going to take my painting policy, I'm going to get my clipboard put together here on my timesheet, grab my painting bucket, and we're going to be off. We're going to be off to paint our apartment today. Welcome out to Forest View. We made it out here and a couple of different things that I wanted to point out along as we're out here. I stopped out on site here and uh, one of the things that you know we continually do is you know our whole job is to keep the property picked up. So when we come out on site and we have garbage laying on you know, to where we're going or on our property, you know, just, just bend down, take a little extra time, pick up the garbage that's laying on the lawn, and I usually just throw it right in the back of my truck. All of our main maintenance super, uh, supervisors and maintenance techs are required to have their maintenance systems put in place within 30 days. You know, my, my recommendation is get to get the uh, service request, or get all the, the, the tool layout and, and systems that you're going to use done as soon as possible, but uh, really developing a system will help you fulfill fulfill your job job duties and, and within your responsibility. What I've done here is I've built a drawer system. Everybody has a little bit different systems. Your maintenance coordinator will have diagrams and examples of other systems that that the maintenance techs can put in place. But all of our permanent staff, whether it be a supervisor or a maintenance tech, is required to have some type of system. And just for an example, I pull out, I keep all my tools in here. I don't know if the cameraman wants to come in and it's not highly organized, but I have my screwdrivers, my, my, all my bigger tools in the back, um, hammers, etc. right here. So I have all my tools, sockets. I have little drawer systems on the bottom here where, where I put other parts and pieces so I can efficiently handle the different maintenance tasks that I have outside of the painting, painting job that we have going on. Keep my drill, got my, my chisels, my other my other drill bits, I got a whole screw kit here, electrical is back here. I got miscellaneous uh, tools, uh, you know, you name it, I'm pretty well set up for tackling all kinds of different projects. The nice thing I like about the drawer system here is that I can put stuff up on top of it and it kind of stays out of the way. And uh, I got a short little drawer here for my, my sawzall, etc. I can easily pull everything out of here and I have room for putting other sources or other, other things inside of here. And you can kind of see that I got my painting buckets all set up. I actually have two of them that I put together here. And I uh, grab my painting buckets. I got my tarp system here. 
grab my coffee cup, and I'm, I'm ready to head into the apartment building. Welcome back to Painting 101 with Dave here. We're going